So I grew up in Laken. Um, basketball was very important. So I was my, my, both of my brothers play basketball. I'm the youngest in the family, and um, we had a basketball court in our neighborhood. And in my school, we had three basketball courts. So I started playing soccer. But I remember that one summer, all my friends were gone on vacation. And the only way to do something during the summer was to actually go to the basketball court. So I was 11 years old, I went to the basketball court. And at first it was funny because people would not catch my name, Jacques. They would say, oh, Eddie's little brother. But my brother was like 6'8", which is like 2 or 3, 2 or 4. They said, oh, Eddie's little brother is here. He's, he's, he's young but tall, let him play. So that's how I started to play basketball. We want to play and have fun. And so when I started to play basketball, it was just about a way to actually you know, use my body and just enjoy myself. You know, let's just play all day. That's all we do. And I'm gonna tell you, nobody ever came to watch us play for so many different reasons. It was, it, was, it was a difficult neighborhood. I don't think people were comfortable coming, but we were playing basketball. And Coach Van Kerskaver showed up at 9.30. And he sat there and watched us play. He came and talked to me. And that's when I started to believe, hey, maybe what I'm doing here, Maybe it's good enough to go to the next level. I didn't know, but his influence on me was very important. And he signed me to go to Mekelen when Eric Strulens was playing Jacques Stas, Dirk Snedes, Eric uh, Rixamay, Bill Varner. And he put me on the first team right away. I went the first day on the first team with Bill Varner and he put me on the court in practice for the first month in August. Uh, put shoes on my feet, telling me, listen, Jack, if you feel comfortable with Jordans, I'll get you Jordans. Your, your job is to get better as a player. All I had to do is take the train every day in practice, which was not easy because I would go to school and at four o'clock, I would go straight to the North Station, go to Mekelen, walk all the way to the gym and come back by nine o'clock at night, four times a week. Sometimes I even ha didn't have much food in my stomach, but they gave me the environment to get better and Coach Van Kerst believed in me and that was very important. So I was playing on the national team with Thomas van der Spiegel, uh, Dimitri Lowers, but as I went to the doctor, the doctor told me face to face, he said, your body is not meant to train three, four, five times. It's just, a, you know, different. Everybody has a different body. When I came back from the surgery, I found it very difficult to play without pain and I lost my athletic ability on the court. I thought, I know I'm not going to play a long time because the, the plane was, was way too high for me. But basketball can still help me travel the world. So I met this American, Fred Young. And after a game, I told him, listen, I want to go to America. You know, I believe if you're passionate about basketball, you should go to America and go to high school and go to college and, you know, get that feeling about cheerleaders. You get, you know, you get practice every day you got 5,000 people watching you so to me was one place I wanted to go was America and get a taste of their basketball as I came back from America I was filled with the American dream which is there's no limits to what you can do you just gotta go and, and get it you know I went to Kinshasa I found a basketball court a um, few kids playing Introduce myself and I told them, listen, tomorrow bring your friends and we're going to have a camp, which I means every day I will come back in the morning and we train together. I got the players the next day, about 20 players. Nobody had a basketball. You know, the reality was, it was so different. And it took us another 24 hours to bring one basketball. And I had about 20 players and we just started to practice. But that was my first step on the courts in Kinshasa. 24 hours to get players, 24 hours to get a basketball, then we can start. You know, actually it was a, a couple of days before the, the Basketball Without Borders. They called me and said, Jacques, do you want to come to Basketball Without Borders, which is an NBA basketball camp, um, probably the, the most important basketball camp in Africa. Just went there and, uh, you know, I was invited after that every year. I had a chance to work with a lot of people, Patrick Ewing, Aki Olajuwon, uh, Kyrie Irving, um, I had one-on-ones with Janice Antetokounmpo, uh, Eric Bledsoe, uh, just, just a bunch of guys, you know, and it was 
a fantastic ride starting me doing something random stuff in Congo to being with the NBA. As I got there, the trust level grew between me and the NBA people to a level where the Spurs got in touch with me, uh, asking me to be their African scout. It's, you start from the bottom. So at first, I was there just to translate. But then, you know, it started that sometimes we're given advice and, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's a good, good job, Jacques. Or, hey, can you warm them up? Yeah, I warm them up. Hey, Jacques, what about this? I went up the ladder slowly, 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 slowly. Uh, but it started from translating to coaching, to training, to, to, to what I'm doing right now. Back in 95, it was almost impossible to have, to watch an NBA game on TV. We had to fight to have an NBA magazine in our hands. A little bit longer than 20 years later, NBA is everywhere on TV. So why not India? I think India is, is definitely the, 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 one of the most important markets and it will be as successful as Africa has been these past 10 years. The management is, is, is incredible. It's, you know, we, we have we following the, the youth national teams and you always work with trusted coaches who have good eyes to, to smell potential players and who are doing a great job in the community. So you get all those information together. Then we bring all the players and for a week we practice all together. Once more, you, you're not only looking at the athletic abilities, but you look at the basketball IQ and the character, which is very important, how hard they can work on the court. And that's how we're starting now. You know, these are the first step. These are the first step. You wouldn't want to start with an academy with 200 players. You want to start with the first step, get better with your product, with what you want to share, with what you want to offer, and then you can grow. We are trying to help those kids reach their full potential. Either they want to play in France, they can come to Belgium, go into the ballet, or maybe go to the G League or the NBA. It's giving those kids a chance to move to the next level. What has me, made me uh, do what I do right now, what has made, given me that, such that interesting journey, is the fact that I went one step after the other, and I never said no to an opportunity to, to make something happen. So I think, a lot of people are doing a great job in Belgium, a lot of good coaches, a lot of young players coming up, a lot of professionals now going to have a chance to play in Italy, in France. Uh, but just, you know, you can make the next step and you're probably better than what you think. It's just a question sometimes to allow yourself to go to that uncomfortable zone, beyond the comfort zone. And you're already successful today, but you don't know how much of the world you can con conquer until you try it. So I would say, you know, chest out and just go for it. Go for your dream, work hard as a coach, as anybody, and there's something waiting for you. If it's not already in your hands, it, it's, it's coming, it's coming in, in shortly in, in, a in a short time.